Welcome to the COBOL IT Learning Center. Getting started using the COBOL IT Debugger in the Developer Studio. In this module, we will show you how to configure and use the COBOL IT Debugger in the Developer Studio. We will launch our sample program in the Debugger. Then, we will examine the different views in the Debugger, and explain important functions. We will perform a debugging exercise and see the basic debugging functions in use. Finally, we will examine our trace file. After these exercises, you will be prepared to use the COBOL IT debugger in the developer studio. Prerequisites For these exercises, the COBOL IT compiler suite and developer studio must be installed on your Windows machine. Since the COBOL IT compiler suite uses the host C compiler, you are also required to have the C compiler installed. For guidance, see the COBOL IT e-learning modules, installing COBOL IT compiler suite enterprise edition on Windows, installing COBOL IT developer studio on Windows and getting started with the COBOL IT developer studio on Windows. Now, let's begin by taking a look at our sample application. Sample programs used in COBOL IT online training can be found in the samples directory in your COBOL IT distribution. Our sample program allows us to demonstrate basic debugging tools, such as stepping through a program, setting breakpoints, monitoring variables, and gathering output in a trace file. Before we start our debugging exercise, first, we need to configure the workspace. To configure your workspace, select the window function from the main menu bar. Then, select preferences from the drop down menu. The window preferences screens provide the interfaces for configuring a workspace. Configuring a workspace allows you to select preferred behaviors in the code editor. It also allows you set the compiler flags you will be using in your COBOL project. Finally, it allows you to select default behaviors. Let's take a look. This is the window preferences screen. The selections in the panel on the left can be expanded to provide more selections. For our exercise, we will make configuration settings in the general screens, the COBOL screens, and the run. Debug screens. Let's start with the general screens. The general screens provide interfaces for configuring your COBOL code editor and for setting default behaviors. We will begin by looking at the text editor screen. Expand the general option to see the general screens. Expand the editors option. Select text editors. On the text editors screen, Select Show Line Numbers. This causes line numbers to display in the first six columns of the Developer Studio Code Editor. This can be very helpful in navigating within your source code, as you write your programs. Now, let's move on to the Workspace Settings screen. To access the Workspace Settings screen, expand the General option, in the panel on the left. Select Workspace. The Workspace Settings screen allows us to set certain default behaviors. On the Workspace screen, deselect Build Automatically. This prevents Eclipse from automatically syntax checking as you enter code in your code editor. Select Refresh using native hooks or polling. Select Refresh on Access. Select Save Automatically before Build. The Refresh and Save selections are optional but considered best practices. Now, let's set our compiler flags in the COBOL screens. On the environment tab, we have set the dash i compiler flag to the copy subdirectory. On the link tab, we have set the dash o compiler flag to the object subdirectory. On the debug optimize tab, we have selected the dash g compiler flag. This is required by the debugger. We have also set the dash f trace compiler flag. This allows us to generate a trace file, which we examine at the end of the exercise. Now, 
let's set the launch behavior of a debugger perspective. In the window Preferences interface, click on Run Debug to expand the function list, and then click on Perspectives. On the Perspectives window, under Open the associated perspective when launching, select Always. Click Apply to accept your changes. This completes the configuration of the workspace. Click OK to return to the developer studio. Let's configure our project now. The new project wizard. To open the new project wizard, select file from the main menu bar. Then, select new from the drop down menu. And project from the subsequent drop down menu. Expand the COBOL option, and select COBOL project. Click the next button at the bottom of the dialog screen to continue. We will name our project Project 1. The program we wish to debug already exists, so we will select Create Project at Existing Location from Existing Source. Then we will use the Browse button to browse to the location of our source code. After selecting the directory, click Finish to create your project, and return to the Developer Studio. Project 1 has been added to the Navigator window, with all of the source files, and subdirectories under the project folder. We can now proceed to clean and build our project. To clean and build the new project select project from the main menu bar, and then select clean from the drop down menu. On the clean window, accept the defaults. Click OK. Our build is complete. Now, let's proceed to create our debug configuration. In these exercises, we will focus on how to use the debug configuration to set runtime environment variables to produce file traces, and to name an error file to capture debugging output. To create a debug configuration for envcheck.cbl, right click on the file in the navigator window. Select Debug as from the drop down menu, and then select Debug configurations from the subsequent drop down menu. On the Debug configurations screen, select COBOL program in the panel on the left, and then click on the New Launch Configuration Toolbar button to create a new debug configuration. The Debug Configuration Wizard has four tabs. On the main tab, enter a name for your configuration. We have entered the program name. The project name and program entry fields are pre-filled. On the runtime tab, we will keep the default settings. Click on the environment tab. On the environment tab, set your environment variables. To add an environment variable to your list, click on the new button. In the new environment variable windows, enter the name and value of the environment variable. Click OK. We have built a list of four runtime environment variables. We need the COB error file to capture the output generated by the dash F trace compiler flag. We need the COB file trace environment variable to capture file tracing information. Click on the apply button to accept your settings. Then, Click on the close button to return to the developer studio. To launch the debugger for envcheck.cbl, the program should be selected, and open in the code editor window. Then click on the debug button on the main toolbar. This will open the program in the debugger perspective. This is the debugger perspective. Let's do a brief overview of the main windows which are called views. The debug view shows the program running in debug mode, and the line of execution. The program view is a COBOL IT code editor which is animated during debugging. The variable view allows working storage, linkage section, file section fields to be expanded to see values. The breakpoints view lists breakpoints that have been set. The expressions view lists variables that have been set to watch. The outline view is an outline view of the program running in debug mode. The debug console view provides information about the status of the debugger. Now, 
Let's look at the debugger toolbar functions. In these exercises, we will set some breakpoints, use the step into, step over, and terminate statements. We will set a variable value, and watch the variable in the expressions view. Finally, when we reach the end of our program, we will terminate the debugger session. Let's begin by setting our breakpoints. To set a breakpoint, double click in the column to the left of the line numbers, which start in column 1. The breakpoint is indicated by a blue dot. Hover over the breakpoint with your cursor, and you will see that your breakpoint has been registered. This breakpoint is also visible in the breakpoints view. You may remove the breakpoint by double clicking on the blue dot breakpoint indicator. Now, let's step into our source file. To step into your source, click on the Step Into button on the Debugger toolbar. The cursor, which was positioned on the main section title, advances one step to the first line of code. Click on the Step Into button a second time to position the cursor on the second line of code, which is a Perform Show Environment screen statement. Click on the Step Into button a third time to enter the Show Environment screen paragraph. Click on the Step Into button a fourth time to advance to the next Perform statement. With the cursor positioned on this Perform statement, we will now use the, the Step Over function. We have arranged the variable view to show the values of the screen fields, which are still initialized to spaces. The Capture Existing Environment paragraph fills values for some of these fields. Let's take a look at that. The step over command executes the commands inside this paragraph, and advances the cursor to the display statement. You can see that the commands were executed because the fields have been filled with values. The next statement is a display statement. Before we execute the display statement, let's modify a variable value. In the name column of the variable view, right click next to WS welcome message. From the drop down menu, select change value. In the set value screen, type congratulations. Click OK. You will see that the value of WS welcome message has been updated with the value congratulations. Now, let's add this put a watch on this variable. Watching a variable. In the name column of the variable view, right click next to WS welcome message. From the drop down menu, select watch. This displays the variable WS welcome message in the expressions view. The expressions view can be very useful in programs that have very large working storage sections. In these cases, you can transfer the data items you want to watch into the expressions view and watch this very limited number of variables, instead of watching all of the data items in the variable view. Now, let's use the step into function to observe the effect in the display of the screen. You can see that the value congratulations has been preserved and displayed. Next, we're going to write our welcome message out to a file, using the resume function. We can just run the program to our breakpoint. Click on the resume button to run the program to the breakpoint. In this screen, you can see that the blue arrow of execution has stopped on the blue dot marking the breakpoint. We will now execute one more step, and then we will terminate the debugger. Step to place the line of execution on the stop run command and then click on the terminate button on the debug view toolbar to terminate the debugger session. Now, let's take a look at our trace file. To open the trace file, double click on cobra.txt. Here, you can see the output from our paragraph trace, and from our file trace. For more information on the tracing functions, Please consult the compiler flags and runtime environment variables chapters in your compiler and runtime reference manual. Let's proceed to the summary.
In this module, we configured our workspace and our project for use with the Cobolite T debugger in the Developer Studio. We performed a debugging exercise showing how to use the debugger toolbar, change variable values, set breakpoints, watch variables, and use tracing functions. You are now prepared to use the COBOL IT debugger in the Developer Studio. For more detailed information, and the very latest reference documentation, please visit the doc folder under your COBOL IT home directory. We encourage you to continue using the COBOL IT online training program. Thank you.